Welcome to Focus on the Falls. I'm John Merck here. I love this show every single year. It's about art. It's about getting creative. It's about a lot of the talent that's in our district. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. I'm going to introduce you as we kind of go through this little bit of a show. We're going to talk about some of the art that we have here and why art is so important. I'm going to start uh, with right next to me is Tara Shemileski, longtime art teacher. That sounded okay, didn't it? And uh, next to her is Kylie Kenny, one of our very talented students. Thank you so much for being with us. Tara, let's start with a broad question. Art. Why is art and all that it encompasses so important as part of our curriculum? I would honestly say it does not just start with the skill level or the talent. It is all encompassing because it has the problem solving, the creative thinking skills that you need. It's that innovation that totally comes together where you don't have to use it just in the art and design room, where you can take it to other places. Say it's architecture, where you can totally use it there, or say it is in a science lab. Something didn't go right, how do you problem solve it? You know, if it didn't work out first, how can you make it work? That just because you failed the first time does not mean it's not going to happen or be good. I love that problem solving part of it, right? Because you're in the moment when you're creating and sometimes you just need to figure things out and that's a life skill that can be transformative in a lot of different areas. Everyone needs it. We all need to know how to problem solve, right? <laughs> Uh, Kylie is next to you. All right, Kylie, so we're going to get pictures of the, your art behind you. Tell me about when you're in the middle of creating something. What Take me inside of that. Sure. So I usually use art as like a outlet for myself. I have struggled with a lot of mental health issues, and through that, I use art as an outlet. And with that, I usually I draw on my iPad, so I do a lot of digital arts. And I'm usually running all over the place with my iPad. So like these pieces I completed in my classes. And, yeah. <laughs> Does it relax you? Does it help you focus? Does it tell me what it's like when you're in the middle of doing something really cool? It really helps me focus like in any kind of like lecture or class setting. I'm always like doodling or scribbling down. So that just helps me like center myself. So I'm present like in the moment when I pay attention. I want to ask you about the couple specific pieces that were highlighting of yours. One looks like a subway car. Yes. Tell us about that. Tell us about the inspiration about that. Tell us what we're looking at. So that was part of my AP class project was for linear perspective, which was one of my assignments. And so that's just basically being able to like tell the perspective of what you're looking at through art. So I did that from looking down at a subway train. So what's the medium? What did you use? That was that? Uh, that was digital oil paint. Okay, so digital oil paint. Yes. That sounds really cool, but really complicated. <laughs> yeah. So what is digital oil paint? It's basically when you're drawing digital, you have like different types of like options, like as you draw. So you could use like a texture that looks like it's a crayon or a texture that just oh, looks very cool. smooth. So I use mine that's based off of like real life oil painting. So is it done on an iPad yes. or on a device? Yeah. Then how do you get it onto that beautiful card? Uh, that's Shimmy. She prints them out for me. <laughs> So I, just, I just send her an email and it's there. So it's like teamwork. It's yeah, like, oh yeah. Um, Tara, how is it? This it used to be you were either watercolor, you were oil, you were charcoal, or you were pencil. And now in this digital world, how cool is it to have this new option? It is beautiful and it's invigorating where you don't have to have that traditional old school skill set where you can take in the new areas and have a photo behind it and then you work on top of it and you work in the layers as you go um, and it's transportable it's a little bit easier like she said where she works on her tablet more than actually carrying around the portfolio and all yeah. of the supplies but you still need the traditional mindset of this is the layering process that happens and this is what has to show and AP actually changed and so did our scholastic art competitions where that would actually be put into, instead of a 2D design mm -hmm. area, it could also be put into a draw paint. Oh. Because if you look at it really close, you can't tell if it was digital or if it mm -hmm. was the oils. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right, quickly before we move down the line from you, uh, Kylie, tell me about the other piece of art that's yeah, featured there. Yeah, so this other one was a, a portrait I drew of a model, and that was also featured in Scholastic at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And that one, that's a, so cool. a gold metal. Big deal. <laughs> that is really, really beautiful. So Thank was you. that taken from a picture? Was that taken from yeah, somebody? Yeah, so that was based off of uh, an original picture, which is what I did. And then I drew uh, like an outline over that. And from there, that's what I worked off of. That is stunning. Thank you. It has her nose and lips, though, if you look close. Is yeah. it? It's, it's like a composite? Did you do that? So wait, that's your nose and lips? It's a, it's a little bit. That's it's really a little amazing. Bit of inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> That is super cool. All right, let's move down to uh, Kelly. Kelly, you're at North Middle School. 
the kids that you work with, what's the importance of art? What's the importance of having that part of what we focus on in school? Yeah, so, I mean, middle school, it's like the notorious middle school age where you're <laughs> kind of in between being really young, and you're, but you feel like an adult. And art is a really fun way where we let students express themselves, and it's where art becomes an elective rather than a required course. So it really narrows in on students who enjoy that creative problem-solving process, and they like to use art as a medium to express themselves and to grow as people. So that's our main focus at the middle school. And as Kelly McGalligan is with us from North Middle School. So when you see students that now come in and they've chosen that, this is something that I'm passionate about, that I'm good at, that I want to get better at, what's that like as a teacher to see that passion and that look in the eyes when that happens? Oh gosh, they're like my babies. Like they come in and I'm like, oh, you're back <laughs> yeah. another year. Yes. <laughs> I get so excited. And even myself and our other art teacher, Montana Walsh, we like fight over the kids. I mean, I'm sure I've done that to you. I'm so upset <laughs> I don't have Maddie right now as a student. Student. I have to share her with our other art teacher, but it's really nice. We get to form super amazing connections with our students and get to see extreme growth, not just in a year or a semester. We get to see it from sixth grade all the way up to eighth grade, and it's, it's so cool. How's the art world changed since you've been teaching? How has instruction changed? Well, I, I've been only in the art district for four years. I think this is my fourth year, and in the same way, I think the biggest change has been the digital implementation of art forms and we have a digital art class at the middle school where we practice using the same tools as Kylie was talking about in her pieces. So we've seen a lot of advancements in students being able to do a lot of their artwork outside of the classroom without lugging all of their stuff around and just in general education has gone very digital. So in the previous years when we were hybrid when we had to go virtual students were still able to work on some of their art pieces which was really neat to keep them connected. Maddie, what you have featured here is beautiful. Tell us about your piece of piece of art. Uh, so this is, what's cool about this is it was actually made with one line. So it's all continuous. And I never picked up my pen. Are you serious? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so that was the assignment and I just filled in random spots with acrylic. <laughs> so did you do that like in one, like, okay, I have a vision for what I'm going to do, and then you just did it? Yeah. That's really, really amazing. So is that uh, like a marker? Is it like a paint pen? What, uh, what medium? The is with thin Sharpie, and I filled it in with acrylic paint. So that's one line, really? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And then you went back and you filled it in with the color? Yeah. Was this something you had in your head? Was it a picture of something you saw? Where did the inspiration come from? I just really like flowers, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you. Wow, I find them really cool to draw. That is amazing. So tell me about art. Tell me why it's an important part of what you enjoy. I've been drawing and painting like since I could remember. It's always been like a facet of me. Uh, I can't imagine my life without art, honestly. Do you think it'll play a part of your life moving forward? Of course. I mean. <laughs> Duh. When you, like yeah. <laughs> when you like something for this long, it doesn't just go away. So do you like using other mediums? Do you like yeah, to Yeah, I'm paint? mostly like... a digital artist as well. Uh, <laughs> that is so cool. So tell me, when you're in the middle of, do you do it on an iPad, on a computer? What do you use an primarily? An iPad Procreate. So can you do it while you're sitting watching TV? Yeah, that's When you're I sitting on the bed time. in your room? Yeah. Do you just kind yeah. of take it with you everywhere? And when you're inspired, you work on stuff? Mm -hmm. So is that done on an iPad? This was um, this was done with Sharpie and acrylic. This was done like directly. Old fashioned way. You yeah. did it like right on that board? Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. That is really, really cool. When did you know that you were good at art? I think I kind of always knew. From when you were really little, did it interest you? Yeah, like always. Since before I could remember. Is your house like a museum? Do your parents have all sorts of cool stuff all over the place? Um, it mostly sticks to my iPad. <laughs> So you need to do more of these so yeah. people can have it. You should give these away as gifts. <laughs> like that would look really good at my house, actually. <laughs> no, you can keep it. She's like, uh-uh. Yeah, she's, like, <laughs> you know, I, she's holding onto that thing really tight. Like, this is not leaving here. Uh, when you hear Kelly, Maddie, talk about the importance of art and how it inspires her and she lights up, what is that like as somebody who teaches kids art? Well, it's so nice to hear, and I know Maddie is just many super amazing students who can speak to how art makes them so happy and it's such an important part of their life and when we see that shine in the kids it's so nice it's really rewarding 
you know, as teachers, there's good days, there's bad days. And especially on those days where things are a little tough, it's so nice to have students just like you who are so sweet and willing to speak their appreciation for our program. I'm blown away by both of you. That what we've seen so far is absolutely amazing. That's so beautiful. That's Thank so cool. You. It's inspiring. I want to move down to the end where we have uh, Quinn Elliott and is that your daughter, Abby? It is. Hi, Abby. How you doing? Good. Quinn, thank you so much for being here. You work with our littlest students in the district and they're creating and they're living through their art. What's the most rewarding part? Well, the most rewarding part is when you see kids do something themselves. Um, for example, if we're doing an art project, uh, a lot of our art projects are not something where they have to copy something that I have put up on the board, but they get to actually create it themselves. And for example, like this year, we just entered a kindergarten into the art mix. So that right now is the most exciting thing right now because our kindergartners are getting an opportunity to have art for the very first time mm -hmm. with the with the art teacher. And so to see them be excited about what they're doing and problem solve, it is a it's really rewarding to see where they're at, you know, coming in first year, especially this time of year. Can you tell early on that some kids are really gifted when you see a kid that either because it's their ability or it's their passion, that yes. this is something that's really special? Um, actually, some of them are right here. They're, you already <laughs> talked to some of uh, the students that have come through me. So and it so these two young ladies that we already talked to, you had them as well? Yes. Wow, that's pretty cool. That was not planned. No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't planned at all. It just happens to be. So it's that's coming to he in here. It's kind of neat because it's kind of like, wow, my, my old students are here. So it's, it's very wonderful to see them continue all the way through all the levels. And that's, that's the great thing about being in elementary is you get to see the students that take what they have or what they've gotten a chance to experience at a young age and then take it and take it on, on their own and do their own thing with it. So wow. that's, that's the most rewarding. That's so cool. All right, Abby, tell me about your pretty picture. Tell me what, what you, did you paint that? Is that paint? It's watercolor paint. Wow. All right, so it's watercolor. Tell me what you painted. I painted a bird. Um, so I just like did like this picture. Um, like if, like there's this like birds that um, you can pick. So I picked one bird and I picked this one. And then I just like did the first lighter colors first and then I did the darker colors and then I did the background last. It is really, really beautiful. So I have birds like that that come to my feeder. We have Orioles that look just like that. I put grapes out and oranges out and then they come and they're not as pretty as the bird that you painted because that's really, really beautiful. What's it like when you're painting and it's coming together? Tell me what that feels like. Well, it feels like you're having like a motivation of like doing, like inspiring yourself and like just making yourself like, like full of mm -hmm. like, art and it just like makes me feel happy and I just want to keep going until I can't anymore. What does it feel like when you're painting and it just like comes out of you and it's being created on the piece of paper? What's that like? I really don't notice it until like the end until I'm finished with it because uh -huh. I usually put too much detail or a lot of detail in there. That's really really beautiful. How long did it take you to do that do you think? Um, Probably about like like a couple weeks. That's all? Yeah. That's really, really cool. How does it feel to be such a better artist than your dad? Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> it's okay. We know that you're a better artist than your dad. Well, actually, my dad is a better artist than me. You're a good kid. How cool is it to be able to share something like that with your dad? Art is so important to your dad, and now you're so talented. How cool is that to have that connection? It's really cool. That makes my heart warm. That's, that's so happy. You guys are all so talented. So Kelly Tara, I wanted to ask you how rewarding it is when we talked, you, someone mentioned AP art a little bit ago. When you get a student as they're progressing through their time in the district here, and they're a high achiever, and it's clear that it's gonna be part of their future, whether they continue at school, or in their private lives, it becomes something really, really important. How rewarding is that? It's amazing. And it's not just where they're using their talent, but they're using their passion. And it's something that they love to do. And if they can do that as an occupation or just even going to college, do that where you know that true passion is there. It's not something that I have to do this. 
And to me as an adult looking at that, I'm like, they're going to be happy forever. It's going to work. So my daughter went through the art program here. Yeah. She was in AP art and she loved it. And she now works for the Tiffany company in New York. And she uses art because she helps create things and she, every single day, and I told her we were doing this interview and she talked about how it started here in Menominee Falls. That was the foundation, the classes she took when she was little, all the way up to when she was in high school and she learned how to trust herself and how to create and the freedom that art has. And that started with you. Yep, that's what we really instill in our AP art design courses. And they've kind of changed over the years too, where they don't want to see just that perfect art. They don't want to see that. We have to document now where this is what they did first. Eh, it didn't really kind of turn out. They have to write about that and then photograph it and then photograph the new piece and explain why that works better. Where wow. it's like in old school ways, it would be they want to see you fail, but they want to see how you problem solve to get to that next step. And it's OK to fail that it's OK if you don't do something perfect exactly that time. Kelly, tied to all this, how cool is it when some student excels and you know they're going to take this to the next level and it's going to be part of who they are inside of here? Oh, it's really fun because then I go straight to Tara and Corey up at the high school and I'm like, you have got to know this name. They're on their way to you. And it's really fun because we stay really connected as a K-12 department. So whenever we get all together or if I happen to go up to the high school, I see some of those kids once they've progressed into the high school and I can just see that they've continued to grow and it's a really nice seamless transition and they just continue to get better and better. And I start like hoarding all of their signatures from things <laughs> for when they get famous so that I can show those off. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Uh, Quinn, so we're back in now, but there was a time during the pandemic where kids were at home, then there was a time when they were hybrid. How much better is it from an art perspective to have kids back and for you to interact with them? Well, hands-on makes a big difference with elementary art. Elementary art, we don't get a chance to do a whole lot of the digital uh, artwork or digital programs. So we do a lot of hands-on, hands-on skills. And so having the supplies in the art room is a huge factor because not every student has what we're working with at home. So having the supplies available and more paper and the, the proper supplies so they can have a turnover and, and get a chance to do that in class is a big, big asset to those kids. All right, last question is for the students. I'm gonna ask you all the same question and we'll go down the line and answer it. Art is important to me because, and I'm gonna start with you, Kylie, art is important to me because because art is my everything, and I don't know where I would be without it. <laughs> That's a great answer. All right, Maddie, art is important to me because... Art has always been part of me, and I use it every day. All right, Abby, art is important to me because... Just my dad likes to help me, and I just like to do stuff. I like to do art stuff with him, and it just makes me happy. You guys are so talented. We're so lucky to have you in the district and the teachers that instruct you every single day are blessings to all of us that live in this community. Uh, thank you so much for being with us on Focus on the Falls. Tara Shemaliski and Kylie Kenny, Kelly McGallahan, McGallahan, excuse me, and Maddie Dunn and Quinn and Abby Elliott. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.